Hey guys, welcome back. In this lesson here guys, we're going to learn about RLC parallel circuits. And so, you know, this is actually out of your uh, workbook here. It's actually Unit 2, Handout 3A, RLC parallel, and it is the first question in the bunch. If you want to grab that one and follow along, you may. And uh, look, it's asking for the impedance of the circuit, the phase angle, and whether the circuit's leading or lagging, and there's a bunch of different components. Now, we're going to do this one in a second, but no sense in trying to figure out what's going on with an RLC parallel circuit unless we do a little level one review here. Just go over the you know, rules for parallel circuits, okay, guys? So... Just for fun, I've got a parallel circuit with three different resistors in here, and it's 100 volts. And uh, the first rule I want to talk about for parallel circuits is that there is only one voltage, okay? In other words, if the circuit voltage is 100, that means there's 100 volts dropping across that guy, 100 drops, volts dropping across that guy, and 100 volts dropping across that guy, okay? So... One voltage, unlike series, which had only one current and every component had its own voltage drop, right? So two, and number two is more of a non-rule, okay guys? Because I want you guys to remember that, you know, the, what's, the, what's RT for this circuit, okay? Or more importantly, what is not RT in this circuit? RT is not, okay, the sum of the resistors. Yes, RT is the sum of the resistors in a series circuit, okay? But in a parallel circuit, RT is not the sum of the resistors. So let's talk about that for a second. There's a couple of different ways that we could calculate our total for this circuit. Um, one way that you cannot calculate R2T is to go 50 plus 25 plus 10, okay? The total resistance to this circuit is not going to be 75, 85 ohms. All right, guys? So what is RT then? Well, there was a, for, a couple of formulas that you learned in uh, level one, all right? It was this one right here. This is the main one that you used. 1 over R total is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3, dot, dot, dot. And, you know, we're not going to do it, okay? Well, maybe we will. Just for fun, we'll calculate RT. Actually, let's do that for a second here. If I wanted to calculate RT here, and by the way, if this is true, then R total is equal to 1 over 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. So just for fun, we're going to calculate it all in one, at once here, guys. I'm going to go uh, 50 hit 1 over X plus 25 hit 1 over X plus 10 hit 1 over X. Okay, so I'm calculating all this stuff on the bottom here. Equals, and then I'm going to hit 1 over X you know, just to put that one over it. And according to this, RT is 6.25 ohms. Okay, that is the total resistance. So way different than 85, okay? In fact, the total resistance of this circuit is gonna be lower than the lowest resistor, right? Now, we're going to try to figure out what's going on with this circuit where I have a capacitor and an inductor and a resistor, but what I want you to remember from this, from this, is that the impedance of this circuit, Z, is not going to be the sum of these, and it's not even going to be the phasor sum of those, okay? You cannot draw impedance phasors for a parallel circuit for the same reason that you can't calculate RT in this circuit by adding these up, all right? Now, there's another way I could calculate the total resistance, and that is using Ohm's law. And this will be how you would have calculated it probably last year when you learned it in level two. And what I mean by Ohm's law is you figure out the total circuit current because, let's do it here, a third rule is I total 
is going to be I1 plus I2 plus I3 dot 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 for this circuit. So if I can calculate the current here, here, and here, and then add them together, I will have the total circuit current right here. And we're going to actually do that real fast. It's not going to take long. Okay, this is going to be I R1 here is going to be 100 over 50, so this guy will be 2 amps. The current in this rung is going to be 1 over 25, so this current is going to be 4 amps. And the current in this rung is going to be 100 over 10, so this current is going to be 10 amps. Okay, which means the total circuit current is going to be 2 plus 4, which is 6, plus 10 is 16. It's going to be 16 amps. All right, guys? And when I say we can calculate RT using Ohm's law, we're going to write it down here. I mean, we'll do it right over here. R total for this circuit, guys, it should be E total over I total. And so E total is 100, guys, and I total is 16. And if I want to calculate the total resistance of this circuit, it is going to be 1, whoops, it's going to be 100 divided by 16. And it's going to be 6.25 amps. Now I want you to notice that this here worked perfectly okay I could use a reciprocal formula to calculate RT but I can also use our uh, use Ohm's law to calculate RT as long as I've calculated the current first and there it is and the reason I'm showing you all this guys is because this is exactly how we're gonna solve parallel circuits like this alright guys so let's talk about you know these rules when it comes to this circuit, okay? The first rule is it's the same voltage everywhere. Now, I want you to notice that on this particular question, there's no voltage given. And if there's no voltage given in a question, guys, you get to make one up, okay? Because it's not gonna change any of these angles. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go E here is equal to 100 volts. And I'm only making a voltage up so I can calculate the impedance because what we're going to do in this circuit guys is we're going to calculate the current here here and here we're going to add those currents together as phasers and then use Ohm's law to calculate the impedance of the circuit all right and that is the best and only way in my opinion to calculate the impedance of a parallel circuit RLC parallel Remember, impedance is basically RT, or the sum of, you know, these. Now, what you cannot do is draw phasers uh, with three ohms on the bottom, you know, and six ohms maybe going up, and four ohms going down, and then Z being the resultant. That doesn't work. It only works for series circuits, guys, and you can never use it for parallel circuits. So... What we're going to do is use Ohm's law to calculate the impedance. And if I want to do that, I need to calculate the three currents. And so I, and we'll call this IXC, guys. It's going to be E over XC. So it's going to be 100 over 4. Okay. And uh, that's going to be, let's calculate it right here, 100. It should be 25, right? Divided by 4. 25 amps. And we're going to calculate this one. It's going to be, oops, IXL. That's an I, okay? And it's going to be 100 over 6. And so it's going to be 100 divided by 6. It's going to be 16.67 amps, okay? And we're going to calculate I, oh, what's wrong with me? IR, and it's going to be 100 over 3. And I do believe that that is 33.33 amps. Okay, guys, so all I've done so far is calculated the three currents, exactly what I did right here. 
calculated the three currents, okay? And the reason I want to calculate them is because I want to calculate I total. Now, unfortunately, I can't calculate I total, which would sit right here just by adding these up because these three currents are all at different phase angles. And so if I'm going to add these things up as phasers, I've got to draw a little phaser diagram. We'll do it right over here. Okay. And uh, maybe we'll do that in the next video. So come on back in a couple seconds. We'll do the next video.